research from Internet Lab suggests that courts have been very differential to reputational rights such as honor or an image uh, when it comes to freedom of expression here in Brazil. Uh, politicians represent um, a third of the plaintiffs in civil cases involving online humor, uh, usually suing users um, for damages. Uh, in 50% of these cases, um, courts have sentenced users to pay damages considering that they uh, that the reputation of the politicians uh, had been harmed um, meanwhile numerous bills that have been introduced in Congress rely on reputational rights uh, as a foundation for uh, implementing the right to be forgotten uh, using broad language uh, such as outdated or irrelevant information these views might open um, the gate for a flood of uh, lawsuits from politicians seeking uh, removal of content that might hurt them in the future um, elections. Uh, considering the stance that courts had been taken in such cases here in Brazil, what would, would you say are the main things uh, to keep in mind when thinking of legislation to implement uh, a right to be forgotten here in our country? Yeah, well thanks. This connects a bit um, to Chico's question and I really commend that work that the Internet Lab has done. It's fantastic. I think that's sort of, it's exactly the sort of contribution that we need, that empirical, rigorous, largely independent view on everything um, is really important and then we can actually see this. Uh, again, it goes to the lever of the public interest, right? Because my conception of the right to be forgotten is that these politicians are not even in, they're not even in the running. They don't even get up because there's a public interest in unless the information and we must concede that there are some components still of a politician's life that should be private but it's not anything to do with anybody's opinion about them politically that is open open for the masses that's how it should be and that should be if anyone tells you that the right to be forgotten is something else then they're missing the point i do think it's a very it's very interesting what you say about this um the the regard had for um, personality rights, reputational rights. And this is something that I think scholars who are looking at the right to be forgotten from contexts where this is foreign, so the UK, Australia, Canada, um, the US, they, they don't understand and they're concerned about drift um, and how, how far this can go. I think that if, if um, there are some bills at the moment far too broadly drafted about um, right to be forgotten specifically and I think that they raise a lot of these concerns and dangers and I think it needs to be shifted back to what the core domain who are those 500,000 plus people in Europe who are making requests they're ordinary people they are not they have no public profile and they're victims of algorithmic failure they're not you know so that's what this is about and this is about meaningful data protection rights so that the building blocks of my life I have some degree of control when they when they are used against me because somebody holding those keys to my life and using them wrongly can really affect you for a long time so I think that th that's a really um, it's probably a clarion call to the um, the digital activists and academics to ensure that the core of this right is uh, it, you may actually not need distinct legislation. I think these constitutional cases, um, it's important to think about what dimensions of that are positive. There's actually, I've, I found that the, the case law from the lower courts was actually very promising. It really sort of elaborated it effectively. And this case law from um, freedom of expression, positive case law, 150 to 200 cases now in Europe, based on litigation from Google, which are very pro freedom of expression. And those cases, should reassure anybody who is concerned that what this right could do is exactly what you say, get um, allow politicians to sue ordinary internet users. That is not what's going on here. Those people are comprehensively being rejected in their requests, both by Google, by data protection authorities, by courts. And so I, I really don't think that's what this is about. But the, the essential thing is to bring back that humanity into the debate. And that's the thing that we all have a challenge. You know, the, that's this data set that's private. It's Google's data about what the core of these cases are. We continue to strive for getting that information out. And from there, I think we can build a case that people would understand in the course of things. In fact, probably if you talk to anyone, they think, oh, sure, you know, if they do a sweep and they get some inaccurate information, something that's really harmful, or something that just, it might not even be harmful, but it shouldn't have been there in the first place, that you should have some rights. So I think claiming that back to just what we all can understand, we can all understand youthful, you know, activities that you may want to move on from later, 
um, and just information that particularly is of a sensitive nature and uh, and really should should be s somehow not given the prominence that it is in in Google search results. Thanks. <laughs>